Oh, good. And Joe, we get your uh, audio and then we'll be good. Just right here. I can see you, but can't hear you. Oh, what about now? Boom. You're That's good. Awesome. <laughs> All right, it, brother. It's good it to helps. have you board. Yeah, <laughs> it helps when I unclick the unmute button. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listen up. Uh, what we want to do tonight is just to give you a, well, we're going to greet our audience here. Let me just, I just got it up on YouTube so that we can um, live stream it there because our Facebook live stream is kind of messed up, but it's all good. Welcome everybody to Faith, Family, and Friends. Got a very special guest who is uh, Zooming us, I believe, from Maryland tonight, Joel? Yes. Okay. Joel Yao has uh, over eight years of ministry experience and a heaven-born passion uh, to share how truly blessed and deeply loved people are by their heavenly father. He possesses a great ability to encourage the body of Christ. Is already as young as he looks. Look at him, folks. He's half my age, I'm sure. He's published author, motivational and inspirational speaker. God's continuing to open doors for him to speak in churches and events across the country. And just recently he appeared on uh, Christian Television Network and Cornerstone television network you can find joel and then follow his posts videos podcasts and uh, his blog at joelyout.com today and he's got a couple books out i'd love to hear him tell about them in fact uh we're going to give uh one of those books away tonight to the first individual who comments positively on our show tonight with joel Yao. <clears throat> and i have to say um Kudos to you, Dad, for the years of ministries it had. Um, I know that you have a different, unique ministry of your own, but you guys travel together. But I, I come in contact with him several years ago, and we just had a, a great time uh, chatting about the Lord and his ministry and what God's doing recently, uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, he mentioned that he said, well, my son, he travels from this. So I looked you up, and you got a presence there on um, social media and your podcast, and really uh, speaking for some really, I think, pertinent topics to a generation that maybe somebody's my age or your dad even, uh, maybe don't have an in with. Um, yeah. And so I really want to target on that uh, tonight. I, I say some questions. Uh, one of the things burning in my heart that I'd like to get to as well tonight is, is there such a, as such a thing as a generation gap? How can we bridge it? And how can those who are on fire for God, who are 60 and older like me, my wife is over here, she's not 60 yet, no. your dad, um, and others who've been used greatly of the Lord, uh, work together in tandem with those who are in their 20s and 30s, because God's doing an amazing thing, as we know, uh, Asbury, um, that whole thing, and just jump to several colleges. Uh, but first of all, um, you grew up, son of a traveling prophet, evangelist, speaker, author. Um, what was it like for you to find your own brand of faith? Uh, we know that nobody gets in, into heaven on the coattails of their, of their family. Uh, we have three kids. They were all pre-K. Uh, PK, not pre-K. That's a, what my wife used to teach. Um, so share your journey of faith and how you came to your, your own personal uh, walk with the Lord. Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, you know, being raised in church, you know, sometimes th there's a time, I believe, in each person's life where there's an invitation from God to come up higher. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, you know, a lot of us, we've in the past few years, we've heard prophetic words that have been given to each of us that have that phrase come up higher. And I'll be honest with you, I never really knew what that meant. I mean, it sounds like a nice statement, you know, come up Virtually. higher, but how do you do that? Right. I mean, really, right. what, what does that in practical terms mean? Mm -hmm. And 
Um, for me, it meant going deeper. I was just it, gonna, I was thinking and so that. Yeah. and so sometimes sometimes when it feels like um, you know God is taking us higher, He He reveals things whether it's in Scripture, whether it's in a dream He gives us at night while we're sleeping. He, or if it's through other people, he will reveal clues to where he's taking us. And for me, that that started the journey of me coming up higher in the Lord. And um, so, so what what does that mean? What how did that happen? Well, for me, I'll just tell you from my experience, um, I was someone for years, and I mean years and years since the age of 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. I was glued to cable news programs, cable oh. news shows. I would sit for hours and just consume information and media. And mm -hmm. I, I could tell you who the presidents were. I, you know, I could tell you all that, all those good things. Yeah. But I, there was an aspect of all that that was not healthy for me and, I, and i'll explain yeah i was glued to all the debates and arguments that would be non-stop back and forth and i thrived on that i lived i fed my spirit on that mm -hmm. and over the years i didn't even know it but it was that spirit that spirit of that argument of spirit of, well, he's right and they're wrong. Right. It actually began to contaminate my spirit, man. Mm -hmm. And so what I was outputting was not coming from a place of love or unity. Yeah. And, and um, the Lord really had to take me through a journey of coming out of all that mm -hmm. to see people, had, how, how God sees them. Yeah. And, I think we're in a unique time in history right now where God is extending an invitation to all of us mm -hmm. to come up higher mm -hmm. and see people how he sees them. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean we always have to agree with someone, right. but, but it's kind of like this. If I met someone in a coffee shop and you know, I knew their background, I knew their culture, I knew where they came from. Mm -hmm. I would still be able to see treasure inside of them, regardless. Yeah. And part of the assignment I believe God is giving us today is to pull the treasure out of people, to like pull that, that out. Yeah. Because the reality is not everybody realizes or is aware that there is treasure inside of them. Mm -hmm. In the scripture, you know, we've heard about, you know, Jesus came to the earth and that that Zoe life mm -hmm. that 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 was talked about in the Bible. I, I to be honest with you, I don't think everybody has fully grasped mm -hmm. what that is. Mm -hmm. And and that's why you have some people in church today, they're faithful, they show up every week. Mm -hmm. They do what they're supposed to do. They follow all the rules, but yeah. they're lacking that inward Zoe life, mm -hmm. that inward heaven yeah. that, that could be flowing out from their heart. Yeah. And so I had to really learn all this mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I, I heard a lot of religion growing up. And so that there's an invitation that God is saying, come up higher. I want to show you some things. Mm -hmm. that you don't see right now yeah and i just got to tell you from walking this out the past couple years um through different stages of growth mm -hmm. the the revelation how i am loved by god mm -hmm. gives me a greater love for other people yeah. and so i can i can see people not how my flesh wants to see them because mm -hmm. <laughs> I see, you know, you turn on the news and it's easy to get our own idea, our own version of how someone is. But what is God saying about them? What, what would God have you or I say to help pull them out mm -hmm. of that cave where they are? Yeah. 
into into this reality that wow god loves them you know they were born from above and so um i just feel like it's a unique time in history where um like like you mentioned earlier bridging the gap of the generations i think when we begin to see the treasure inside of each other um whether we agree or disagree on some things that's that is so powerful because that's where unity comes into play. That's where unity takes mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. and, and God honors unity. Mm -hmm. um, he honors people who, um, you, you know, celebrate unity, celebrate peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like, you know, that, that there's different personalities today that <clears throat> try to rally up different folks on different issues, but th there comes a point in time where we have to ask each of ourselves, in, in what I am doing or what I'm participating in right now, is that helping to bring unity? Is that helping to pull the treasure out of people yeah. to see who they, they, they're created by God to be? And it's from that place, that stepping stone, where transformation begins to happen. Now, I have an extra question. Some might say, well, especially when you talk about that generation gap, and it's not to say that young people aren't concerned for these issues, that if you were 13, as you, as you just shared, when you were debating and concerned for all these things, which I'm sure you still are, I, and I know, what, I, I, I get what you say about how God totally, because you were just feeding yourself with a steady diet of it, and it and, and made you have an edge, debating, yeah. arguing. You can win an argument, but when you lose the heart of somebody, you really don't want. So I understand mm -hmm. that. But how can we strike the balance between being um, understandably um, concerned for where our nation's going, policies, lack of values, conservatism, let's just say it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the political process and voting the right people in office or voting for the right things, and at the same time, have that kind of heart that you're, you're, you said that God, uh, you know, drove in you, brought you to. Um, it, it's not a mutually exclusive thing. I think we can do both, I've often said, but we need to do the one, as you, your experience, more than the other. I, and, and maybe I'm answering my own question to you, but yeah. what is your thought in terms of that balance? Because I do believe that we're a citizen of a, a very unique, American experiment, as you know, and we have freedoms that other countries don't don't appreciate, can't ever appreciate, and really want. And so we want to preserve that as citizens. But yet we're citizens of a higher country. So many of our, my Christian friends have, have made this false choice. You have to choose the one over the other. So you can't speak about what's going on in our country and be righteously indignant. I I guess I could say because sometimes it is okay. Um, and I'm like, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think there's a balance. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great that's a great question. In fact, I actually wrote my first book about this. What okay. you're what you're talking about, speaking life to the nation. The nation yeah. And I I even talk about um, speaking life, you know, openly about you know pro life issues and um, saving the unborn and and speaking life into, uh, you know, conservative values. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I even talk about um, prayer regarding human trafficking, things mm -hmm. like that. Good. And when, when I when I started to speak life, now get this: when I started to speak life towards leaders and people who I don't necessarily agree with politically, right? There was a sense of greater peace the Lord brought brought inside of me, where before, you know, I, I was I was hearing voices saying all kinds of things, and and you know more like they were in more of an attack mode than speaking life. Yeah. And um, what I have found, and this is interesting because I wasn't expecting this at all. When I released that book, Speaking Life to the Nation, I began to get feedback and messages from people in government, governmental positions, 
Mm. And they, they would say, well, I heard about the book, somewhat a friend got it for me. And um, now, now this was totally new to me because I was not trying to go out there and yeah. um, for yourself, right? persuade people anything. Right. But, but God showed me something. You know, when we speak life in, in, from a heart of love and compassion, yeah. there is a measure there is a measure that God does mm. to extend our reach of our words. Mm. And, so, and so God will begin to place you mm. in places that you could never walk in on your own. When, mm. when, when we begin to grasp that heart of love and compassion, even as we pray, even as we declare, mm. Lord, send the right leaders into the office, mm. you know, send yeah. Send the right people who you have ordained mm -hmm. to lead and govern at this time in history. Mm -hmm. When we operate from a place of love, there's something that God does. He, it, it's almost like he, he picks up the other half of the equation that, that gets the message across without us having to try to yeah. bolster up you know, anger or hate. And so that's something that really amazed me because just like different people in government reaching out to me mm. with an open mind and an open heart, mm. I never tried to make that happen. Right. God, yeah. God made it happen. Yeah. And so sometimes the, the best place to be emotionally and mentally um, to, to get our message across is coming from that inward place of love. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where God brings favor. Mm -hmm. He opens doors that we could never open. And, you know, sometimes, and I even saw this last year, I was on a program the other night and I shared this. Um, and I'm not going to say who the name was, but <laughs> there was a speaker who last year, had talked about publicly about someone um, who was a scientist and they said a statement that some might consider off, off base. Mm -hmm. And, but here's the thing, they took 30 to 45 minutes to openly accuse them and ridicule them mm. on their live program that went all around the world. Uh, I mean, not just their local building, but yeah media their whole media empire it just went viral mm. and i i was watching this um you know because I, I i've always loved to follow the prophetic and see what god is saying through other people but i sat there and i thought to myself what is this going to do long term mm. for this person being criticized publicly like this what what is that ultimately going to help persuade them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I couldn't think of any yeah. logical reasons. In fact, I thought to myself, well, this is only going to instigate them further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so I just feel like we have to be so careful. Um, I, I just finished an audio book um, I was listening to where it talked about the importance of our words and how um, in quantum physics, our words are so powerful. There are things that um, go into effect in, in the spiritual realm that I don't think a lot of people even think about. And so sometimes when they're attacking someone verbally, whether it's on a news channel or it's in the public eye, a lot of times when they're attacking someone, it's coming back to them. Oh, yeah. And sure. they don't know that. Yeah. And so when we operate from a place of love and, and, and say, okay, you know, they're obviously not in alignment with some in some areas. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, ultimately, it's God's job to reveal his heart to them. That's not my full job. A lot of people have carried a burden for years trying to do certain formulas to try to bring people to God. And really, God is saying, I want you to operate in love. 
and and let me pick up what you can't do. And so that's that's just what my journey has been. That's really good. That's really good to share that because I think that we're we're in a position culturally that if we look with our rational mind and what is the Pandora's box that's been opened up, it would be very easy to attack that or just and it is, there's ignorance and foolishness is abound in such an exponential way compared to years before, ago that it would be easy. But I think, as you say, if we approach people to love and win them one by one, um, yeah. then, then God can sort that ignorance out. We know the fool has said in his heart, he, there is no God. But scripture never says that God doesn't love the fool. It's just simply... And, Really, it is. People are really blinded. But you bring the, the love in and the truth will come in. I think yeah. a lot more, uh, powerfully and, and naturally, organically, I guess we could say. Yeah. You know, it, it's making that heart, you know, like was it Hosea says, break up the fallow ground. And, yeah. and maybe that ground has been fallow because of whatever issue. And they're just clinging to the to the that thing that we don't agree with, you know. Yeah. And we don't underneath there's that person so appreciate your words uh brother i really do it's good i think we all need to hear them because uh we are naturally upset about the things that are happening from one day to the next you know one policy can oh this you know uh, oh you know and we need to keep our eyes on on what's going on and uh, we're praying through our nation every day my wife and i on our uh, broadcast in the morning and every day there's a new issue you know wisconsin just had one good thing happened, but then one bad thing happened. But if you focused on that, you are up and down. But our, yeah. our, our eyes are on Jesus. So tell us about your other book, Your Mountain Must Move. I love the, the title, the subtitle, actually, even more. Hope to Rise Above Mountains of Discouragement. If there's not an emotion that I think we can all, regardless of age or background, can relate to is discouragement. It just seems like yeah. the number one, and scripture really talks a lot about that. So what was the impetus uh, for you writing that? And what, what kind of feedback have you gotten? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, all last year, I, I started to write um, chapters periodically um, throughout each month of situations where I would be somewhere and I would see the goodness of God play out in everyday life, uh, whether it was attending a, a, a bull riding a live bull riding event outside, or um, maybe it was at an amusement park, or maybe I was selling lemonade somewhere outside. I mean, all these different unique places in everyday life where God showed me his goodness, and I I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I feel like God is teaching people in this hour is to see him through our everyday life circumstances. And, um, you know, I, I remember I remember when I was younger, there was a situation where I really felt invisible. I felt left out. I felt like uh, nobody saw me, nobody cared. And um, the Lord showed me that... Um, I wasn't, in fact, invisible. He was just protecting me in in, in the hiddenness at the time. And so for for those of you who feel hidden and and sometimes invisible, Mm -hmm. like, you know, nobody sees me, nobody cares. God is actually hiding you for a special, unique purpose. And at the right moment, he's going to begin to open doors and cause your voice to amplify, whether it's through media or in person. And um, there's just, there's moments where we have to see from God's perspective and not man's perspective. And, And sometimes the most simple things that we encounter on a day to day basis, God is trying to magnify for us to say, hey, that's me at work. That's me doing it. I'm, I'm still with you. And we just have to come to a realization of what we focus on mm-hmm. is important. What we focus on magnifies. 
And if, if we're going to choose to focus on the negative, guess what's going to happen? That's going to be blown up every day in our face. And, and we're going to see God through a clouded uh, perspective that w- he, he never meant us to see. That's good. When you said that, I thought, you know, may God protecting us. And maybe part of what he's protecting us from is the fickleness of, of, of man's approval. Because yeah. once you've attained it, and all of a sudden this one or that group likes you. I mean, even in Christian ministry, this can happen, you know, and you feel, gee, how come that that wasn't accepted? How come that one didn't uh, receive my word or the thing that I, it, it, you can be an adult and you sometimes still feel that. But really, who are we trying to follow? Really, if, we, if we're satisfied enough with God's affection toward us, then we really shouldn't, I'm not the word is it, crave, but even long for or flirt with the, the, the attention and approval man, which is so critical. Even among Christians, it is. And so I, I was thinking today of the 250 interviews we've done on our show. Um, lately, I've chosen to focus on just a few that didn't work out. But what, what, what is that? God is, God is we, we need to focus on the positive, right? Right. And really, if we're satisfied in him, there's nothing else that matters. Let him open the doors and also close the few that may be closed. So um, yeah. it really goes back to that. You know, as a youngster, obviously affects you more because we're just growing up in things. So I like a lot of people can relate to, to you saying that. But even as adults, we remember the broken pieces because maybe we weren't completely healed up from them. And, yeah. and, and I'm sure that with your book, you may have shared a little bit about that, too, because we, we carry that discouragement through the years and seasons. Yeah. And, and uh, if we're not careful, we can come, become better uh, about that. And um, yeah, in the past, the real, really the past two or three years, there have been so many things that have come against us, not just personally, but as a nation, as the United States, mm-hmm. there's just been an onslaught of so many things that have um really caused a lot of trauma and and brokenness inside of people and um that's why the lord is really having me focus on um restoring childlike faith and childlike wonder right now because what when we operate from a place of childlike faith and wonder in each of our lives it is going to propel us to see something we never saw before. It's gonna change our perspective on life, how we see people, how we see ourselves, how God sees us. Um, There's a scripture I'd love to read. Um, This comes from Matthew 19, 14. It says, but Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. Well, what are children? How do children act like? They ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They, They don't stop asking questions. They're curious. But more importantly, I remember as a child when I had a dream or a goal of something, I, I, I made a statement about it. I even wrote it down. And let me tell you, there was nothing that was impossible to mm-hmm. see that come into full manifestation. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember wanting to go um, to Orlando, Florida at, at five or seven years old. And in the natural, it didn't look possible. Mm-hmm. You know, the finances, the money to get there, to stay for a week. But I I began to pray and I just began to decree that this was going to happen, that this was going to take place. Yeah. That's great. And I prayed for (laughs) I prayed for three months, you know, and and within those three months, uh, tickets to amusement parks miraculously came in. People came forward, um, airfare was provided. Mm-hmm. Um, places to stay were provided. And so 
what is God saying through all of this? What, what, do we, what do we each take away from that? Well, God is saying to get back to the place of restoring childlike wonder in each of our lives. And um, it's, it's from that place that it's going to give us a springboard so we can launch out with, with childlike faith. It says, hey, all things are possible to those who believe. And we don't just say that statement because it's a good thing. Yeah. But we say it from a place of victory that we know that God has things, good things for us. And we, we just gain confidence that we never had before. And that there's even a passion. There's even a deeper passion for the Lord that, that comes out of that place of childlike faith. There's a deep passion that begins to get deeper um, all of a sudden. And I have a great example to share with you about something the Lord showed me in a movie I was watching. A lot of us remember the movie, The Titanic. Yes. Um, there's a scene in the movie where uh, Jack looks at Rose and he's, he's trying to convince Rose to, you know, let's, let's jump off the boat. Let's go on this wild adventure. We have $10 left, but we're going to make it. And Rose is kind of, you know, playing it safe, like, nah, I'm just going to stay on board. And uh, we see throughout the movie how Rose begins to come out of her shell. She begins to, to dive into this deeper, adventurous personality because of Jack. Yes, yes. Jack brought that out of her. And mm -hmm. there's a statement that Jack turns to Rose and says, They've got you trapped, Rose, and you're going to die if you don't break free. Hmm. Maybe not right away because you're strong, but soon that fire that I love much about you, Rose, that fire's going to burn out. Hmm. Now, well, the body of Christ. Yeah. Right. And, and in a similar fashion, the Lord began to download to me how as we begin to restore this childlike wonder, seeing through the eyes of a child, how a child sees, mm. it, it, it begins to restore that passion, that hunger for God in a deeper way that religion could never do right. for anyone. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's just so powerful because when we get to this place of childlike wonder, seeing through childlike wonder, there are some things that begin to fall off each of us mm. that we didn't even know were there that have been preventing us mm -hmm. from seeing how God sees us. And then, oh my, we, we can just take off like Superman, like anything is possible for those who believe. I was just going to say to you, but I think you've answered it in a marvelous way I never would have thought. Um, in order to grasp that childlike faith, are there some things we need to let go of first? But when you just said that, that really, like a light bulb above my head. Well, not necessarily. It doesn't mean you're being disobedient. But if we just go toward the Lord, doesn't that imply that we've already released a grip on those things? Religion, as you said, rationale, reasoning, logic. Doesn't mean we give up on that. We lay it aside. And instead, we choose Jesus and our childlike faith in him. And then he could take care of those other issues. So that's actually a good answer before I even ask. The and even, even, I'll even, I'll even say what I have learned was um, about three years ago, um, the Lord connected me with someone who, um, you know, during the week, whether it's one day, two or two days or three days during each week, um, the Lord just has a certain individual call me out of the blue. I never know when they'll call and they'll just speak life and, and encouragement to me and I'll do and we'll do vice versa. Mm -hmm. But again, this half, this first happened three years ago and I'll got, I'll got to be honest with you. I, I grew up in a church building. I grew up in youth groups. I grew up in 
all the religious services, you name it, I've, I've been through it. Three years ago, when I started getting phone calls from someone the Lord connected me with, something began to happen in my spirit that began to expand. There was an expansion that began to take place inside of me where they would begin to speak things into my life that I didn't know I was capable of doing, such as starting to write books, uh, starting to speak places, uh, starting to do podcasts, you know, all these new things that three or four years prior, I had no concept of how do you even do that? But it took one person, not a not hundred people, not 500 people in a building. It took one person picking up the phone on a consistent basis. And so here's what God showed me through that. Now more than ever, it's important for each of us to begin to align ourselves with people mm-hmm. who carry childlike faith. That's true. And that, that alignment in itself with just one person mm-hmm. can do wonders for someone's life. And it, I'm, I'm living proof of, of that happening. And so, you know, sometimes when we think we need 50 people, 100 people in a building uh-huh. to take care of us and solve all of our life issues, yeah. sometimes it's that one person Mm-hmm. that reaches out and God connects us with. And then we can be that person to other people. We yeah. can be that strength. Mm-hmm. And um, there's that hope, you know, Christ Christ in you, the hope of glory. And there's just things that begin to bubble out of us that that God begins to bring to the surface that we never thought was possible. But again, it, it does take that alignment, I believe, yeah. with specific people and i i don't to be honest with you i that's that's why i've always been under the impression some people tell me well yeah i attend this place every week or i i attend this uh group of people every week um well that's great we all need fellowship but what are they adding to your life what are they what are they calling forth are they pulling the treasure out of you That's the key questions to ask, because um, a lot of us have been raised in in places, and sometimes God wants us to connect us with that one person who is like that key that unlocks Mm -hmm. something. I had had something like that happen to us in in ministry back in Maine. We were really going through a difficult time back in the late 90s, early 2000s, Um, out of the blue. And this individual, through a series of um, traveling up to where we were and speaking and sharing, he did that. But I, I, I remember some of the most powerful times was when he simply embraced me with a hug and wept over me. Wow. And that unlocked, as you said, so much healing and, and b- belief that God could do that. And then he continued yeah. to for. So somebody out there needs that tonight, obviously. We may have had a certain way we wanted this to go tonight, but um, I don't want to abruptly move toward the next question or two, but maybe there's some people out there who are just struggling with discouragement because all they can see is their failures and they can't see what God's already done or what he's going to do because they're so enamored with that. Um, And you've been speaking to the heart already. what else would you say to them in terms of finding that person or maybe God finding them with an individual uh, and having faith that God is, is sees where they're at? He doesn't miss anything. Look at Elijah. I mean, he had that amazing victory and everybody would be lifting him on a pedestal today if he was living today. But the very next thing, he's running from old Jezebel and he gets depressed and God's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and yeah. God helps bring him out of that discouragement, uh, Joshua was another one trying to fill Moses' shoes. And in the first chapter, he says it like six times. 
be strong and have good courage. So um, there may be somebody tonight, and it's not not the, not just that we want to give them a free book. We want to give them life, Joel, and you've yeah. been doing that. But any other final words that you'd like to share? And then, then maybe close with a word of prayer. Pray for a great awakening in our country again and for the, for the youth that just seem to be, man, I tell you, I just want to, I think I've said this, Amy, my wife's over here sitting behind me. We've had, what, a handful, probably half a dozen guests who are about your age, who I know in my heart are a fulfillment of what God told me about 15 years ago, that he was going to do a quick work. I think I told you, your father, this um, in the youth, because he said, I'm older, but God's doing a quick work in me. And when he shared that, that was very true. But I can see that coming to pass in front of me as I'm talking to you tonight. And I want to thank you for listening to the voice of God and, and going deeper uh, with the Lord. Yeah. And so what would you say? I know it's a long way to ask. I, I have a great I have a great response to that. And it might sound too simple to people that it would be tempting to brush it off as too easy or too simple but it's a huge it's this is a major key hmm. that if we're not careful it, we're going to miss everything there's a scripture and you might be able to help me mm -hmm. find where it's at but you know about jesus my yoke you know his yoke is easy that's your 11 28 and, and burden is light yes, yes. well just based off of that one single verse alone, I would begin to ask the Lord and also be led by the Spirit to for the Lord to show you people who carry that type of spirit about them. Like, yeah. For example, you know, I'm not going to purposely go out and find someone mm -hmm. to help speak life into me right. if they're going to put a bunch of heavy burdens on yeah, me. True. Yeah. And I feel, and honestly, and I hate to even think about it, but there have been a lot of people over the years mm -hmm. that have followed one to two people all their life. Mm -hmm. And they've done nothing but put heavy burdens upon them. I have seen that too. You're and right. so they're in this hamster wheel of mm -hmm. always going around and around trying to get ahead but they can't because every time they do there's more burdens mm -hmm. put on them more conditions more yeah mm -hmm. and so the key is number one prayer lord show me who to connect with okay. um number two the internet the the benefit we have today with the internet it is easy now more than ever mm -hmm. to find people that are going to call forth that identity that's that's in you, the Christ in you, the hope of glory. That we we have an advantage today with the internet where we can connect with people at lightning speed yes. and, and begin to uh for them to speak life into us. In fact, just today I was writing up a new program I'm launching. It's called Awakening to Hope. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm gonna begin doing monthly one-on-one -on -one Zoom video calls with people. And uh, it's all about speaking life, speaking encouragement into them. Because what I found when that happened to me some years ago, it gave me the faith and the confidence to step out and write books, mm -hmm. to step out and speak. There was a transformation that took place. And it's funny, the very person who I'm talking about that did this by phone, the other week in the mail, they sent me a pillow with a butterfly that they had painted. And at the top of the pillow, it says transformed. And so that was a reminder yes. that I had come out of a season mm -hmm. where God was beginning to transform me. Mm -hmm. And so he'll do it for anybody. And Don't so worry. I feel like a new calling on my life right now. Yeah. is to help others what what someone helped me yeah. and that is awakening to hope that is putting a conscious effort and a conscious focus on the goodness of god yeah. and calling forth that that light that treasure that is inside of you because when that happens 
And that's when real transformation happens. We're not trying to follow a religion. We're following Jesus and we're recognizing who he is and that he is good. And so um, I'm excited to begin doing that for people. Amen. Well, isn't that what discouragement is? The loss of hope. So when yeah. we awaken to hope, then that discouragement has been dealt with and God has healed the heart, begins to heal the heart. Uh, and uh, wow, that's great. Well, can you close us praying for these people who may be watching and will watch as we repost this on uh, Spotify and, and Facebook later? And um, so good to have you, boy. I've got, yeah. whenever I have a good guest on, I take all these notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank I'd you, love, Joel. yeah, I'd love to pray. Yeah. Heavenly right. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this broadcast. Um, that features voices from even all around the world. God, we thank you that now more than ever, you are beginning to connect people to uh, people to do life with, to people who help fulfill our calling, to help fulfill our destiny with. And God, we thank you that at an accelerated rate, people are discovering mm -hmm. the treasure that is inside of them. And you are helping to pull out that treasure day by day, week by week, and that you are revealing even greater mysteries about why we're here on the earth for such a time as this. And God, I thank you for every listener, every viewer tonight, and in the future on the replay. God, I thank you for instilling an anchor of hope in you, that you are their heavenly father. And, and, and I thank you that the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals all truth in, in their life. And God, I just thank you for ordaining this time and, and, and beginning to give people wings that they can begin to spread and soar like an eagle because they are hearing your voice and they are following your footsteps that you have on the path for their daily life. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I want to pray for my brother. Thank you so much for working this out. When we can be together, he can share his story and his life, his journey of faith and be an encouragement uh, to others who are listening and watching. God, is, uh, you brought him through a time where uh, somebody reached out to him and now he's in turn uh, making it possible, just putting himself out there to reach out to others to win individuals one-on-one -on -one, uh, and instilling into their lives uh, hope uh, and belief because we all need somebody to believe in us. We know that you do, but sometimes putting a human face on it or hearing somebody that we know or maybe don't know but comes into our lives, say it to us. Uh, it awakens us, Lord, as Joel has said. It transforms us. You do through that. And we pray that it would happen exponentially all across this world. And thank you for the work that you do and keep our focus on you. And bless Joel and his ministry and his dad as they travel together and all the different things that you have them do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you, brother. Let's stay in touch. Amen. God bless. All right.